All right, guys, today's video is a focus on my Fuyu and Fuji persimmons. Now, my memory's a little fuzzy here because it's been so long. I believe that this tree is the Fuyu. The second tree is also the Fuyu, and the one on the end is the Fiji. Uh, these trees are basically gigantic persimmon producers. If most people, when they hear the word persimmon, think of the American tree, uh, these trees actually can outshine them in the sweetness category. These trees are rated as the top sweetest persimmon that you can get. I have tasted these before, and it is just so sweet that I, I can't handle it. It's too strong for me. So these guys grow very, very large. Think of, it almost looks like a big tomato tree. If you look at how these look right now, I mean, it literally looks like I'm growing tomatoes on a tree. There are limbs that are bowing. There are limbs that are broken. I did put a slight wave of boron on this tree, not my normal strength, because these fruits are just so heavy and large that I risk really damaging this tree. So as of right now, I have been kind of holding back on what I can do for this tree other than I need to fertilize it a little bit more. But if you're thinking of persimmons as an attractant, these type of trees here do extremely well. They've already fallen off and guess what? There's nothing here, they're gone. Usually they last one to maybe two days, something grabs them up, whether it's deer, whether it's coons, coyotes, something comes in and takes these. I could set a camera up here and see which one is doing it, but you can get an idea. These are just so much larger than normal persimmons that people think about. And let me, uh, this one here is probably a pretty good example. I mean, these guys can get as large as apples. Right, these guys are huge. This one's still hard as a brick, which means it's still getting bigger. And with all this rain, uh, it's already split a few of them. But they will turn colors. They turn orange, reddish orange, depending on uh, how deep you let them set. And then when frost hits, they get super sweet. So you have to kind of wait for frost to hit. Although, if you're a deer and it's on the ground, who cares, right? but it is a high attractant tree. I bought this tree and this tree for 10 bucks a piece. When they were first introduced in the store, those trees were nearly $50 a pop and they were near death. I mean, literally had two to three leaves left on them, but they were green. I mean, they were nice and green. And I said, I'll take them. I knew I could revive it. And now these trees are doing very well. I mean, you can see that growth shoot right there. That's more than two feet. So they do have a pretty darn good pace of growth on them when they're younger. Uh, top end of height is about 25 feet for these trees and it can probably grow just as bad as wide. So you can imagine what this tree is producing now and these two trees are touching each other I'm going to have a carpet of persimmons under here right next to the food plot. So this one is my biggest fu uh, Fuyu persimmon. I'm almost about to get these names mixed up, which I probably already have. Who knows? So there we go. Good size ones. Lots of them. I did not treat this with boron. This is what this tree has naturally produced without any stimulant just because of fear of snapping limbs on these trees. However, I'm gonna save this for the end of the video. Hang on to the end of the video and I'll have something for you here. But you can see lots of production, good size mass, big time uh, persimmon producer. Same thing here, here's the other type. And if you want to get seeds off of these, you have to have supposedly two different types in order to get a chance to have seeds. So this one is the Fiji persimmon. I hope, I hope I'm right on that. If you look up Fiji or Fuyu, you're gonna see round ones like this, 
or you're gonna see the long bell shaped ones like that. There's no height difference in, in trees. They pretty much grow to the same size. This one just makes rounded fruits more like what you think of an apple. It, uh, it doesn't look you know, like a tomato, but they do change color and they will fall off at some point. Something has attacked the tree and I'm not sure if it was a coon that climbed up here to get these things or what, but it did break limbs off here, here and here, and this top was broken out. But that is most likely insect related due to cicadas that are out and about right now. So these guys will produce very well. I also bought this tree when it was young. It wasn't but maybe a foot taller than where I cut this off right here. And within, I would say that's four, four, five years. Uh, that's pretty much what I've gotten out of it. Uh, I didn't take care of it as much when I first put it out and it grew a lot slower and now it's jumping out and taking off and growing in most cases two feet a year except for this year it did grow shorter. But he is definitely something to think about. Super high attractant, super large persimmons on these trees. Uh, when you see these actually in person you'll be shocked at how large they are. But uh, it is definitely a different type of tree, different type of attractant for me. I do have full Americans that are just past the evergreens down there. And they are absolutely covered with persimmons. And it's basically who's better at who. And it's hard to tell when I don't put cameras up here. And yet there's no none of them on the ground right now to show that uh, they last very long. All right, guys. So that's pretty much it. A different type of persimmon tree with a super high attractant and is super sweet. It needs at least one frost to become sweet. Uh, you'll see crystals form uh, on the bottom end of those and that crystal is actually the sugar it produces. So very high sugar content. Deer love them and so do a lot of other animals. All right guys. Uh, nice little insight here to a different type of tree. You all have a good day.